those when I first started producing years ago, these were the speakers I used. I had like four of them and a subwoofer, and I actually uh, produced probably, I don't know, maybe two tracks that were actually picked up by labels and released on these. And it's amazing. I mean, it's it goes to prove that, you know, no matter what you think about your abilities, sometimes the speaker isn't the most important thing. It's your ear. So that being said, though, I was happy to move on from them. So I had these clips, uh, the surround sound, the, mon the subwoofer, and I upgraded to the uh, M-Audio BX5. They were mounted there, the M-Audio BX5s. They were mounted up there and pointing down at me, creating that nice little audio triangle that uh, you, know, you always want to have within your um, music environment. So. The M-Audio BX5s for years, three, three and a half years or so, great set of speakers. They did the job. I produced a lot of tracks on it, was able to, you know, once I understood the dynamic of the speaker and the way it was performing in the room, was able to, you know, do quite well with it. But just only recently, I started to decide that it was time to upgrade. So um, it's never something you want to spend a lot of money on. I mean, I don't have a big budget. I'm not the richest guy in the world. I'm just like every other Joe out there, you know. I work nine to five and, and, and try to keep the dream alive. But uh, as you can see, the studio is pretty bare. Even probably my voice is probably getting a little reverb or echo in here. And the only reason it is, is I'm getting ready to sell the house. My wife and I are gonna move. And I didn't really wanna put the uh, you know necessary treatment here on the walls that would dampen a lot of sound. You know, it's just not a, a wise investment if you're going to tear it down and have to, you know, repair the drywall and all that. I'm already mad that I've got to put some drywall filler in those holes and paint over that. But uh, trying to minimize my workload when the house is sold. So ultimately, you know, it'd be nice to have like hardwood floors and all that fun stuff. And that may be in the future and it may never happen. I don't know. But these are new, so I won't have to no longer wall mount. But I've got the Proline uh, speaker stand right here. Got my backpack hanging on it. Let's see if I can uh, move that guy out of the way. So yeah, there's the Proline speaker stand. One here on the left, just off the wall. I've got it back about, it's probably about 12 inches, 12 to 14 inches off the wall so that the, the port on the back of the new monitor, when it fires uh, the base port, it doesn't bounce too hard into the wall. Plus I'm gonna put a little treatment up there actually. I've got some foam pads that we're gonna use to uh, go ahead and put onto the wall here. I'm just going to use a staple gun so it doesn't create too much of a, you know, I don't want to glue it and have it uh, peel off the drywall uh, stuff. I figure a staple won't be hard to cover up. But I've got these guys right here. Put one of these behind each uh, speaker on the wall and it'll help absorb some of that rear firing bass uh, noise and stuff like that. You guys get the picture, I'm sure. So. As you can see, it's overall my studio is pretty simple. I mean, I don't really like even using the term studio. It's just a music space. But you know, for what we do, just doing the tutorials and producing a song here and there, this room and this environment is perfect for me. It invites me to be in here. I like things plain. You know, I've got the world map there because I like to be able to mark places we've traveled to or vacation to, or just you know, like to give myself a. Uh, global reference to what's going on around the world when I chat with people or any of that stuff. So, but overall, the room's real plain. It's just got the window there with the blind. You got a little closet space here and the main entrance. So, it's just nice to have a spare room in the house. You know, to call my own and, and, and come in here like a little man cave. And you know, it's not fancy because that's just not who I am. I don't have a big fancy uh, mentality towards life. I like things kind of streamlined and plain and clean and and you know ready to go. So that's quick kind of browse of, if you want to call it a studio or a browse of my music space, my music room. Uh, like I said, not a whole lot going on in here because over the years I've simplified, I've, I've sold gear off, I've sold guitars off, keyboards and things like that. Just kind of I've streamlined things down into a, an environment that works best for me. I'm never really a guy that wants to have a, I don't want to look like a hoarder, you know, like a guy that just has a bunch of gear piled in a room and he maybe only uses one thing or ends up using nothing but software, so. But I'm not critical, you know, if you have a studio and you have a bunch of gear, hey, I'm happy for you, that's awesome. Wow. I went to a Guitar Center with the intention of buying the Yamaha 
HS8s. I'd heard a lot, seen a lot, the reviews were good, I tested them in the store. Really good flat speakers, sounded like it was going to work well in a studio. Then I started thinking about the actual space I'm in and I realized that it's just too small for that. That's one concern. But the other one is, now that the Atom company or the Atom speaker you know, team has decided to maybe reach a different price point with some of their audience, you know, they were, they're always up into, their cheapest speakers were like, a pair of them were like 750 for one. So you're looking at 1500 for two, and then it just goes up from there. So their bottom line was around 15 to 1600 with tax, and that was just way out of my price bracket. And I'm sure, you know, out of most people. So in the last year, they decided to deliver their, what they call their T-series, their T7V, and I believe there's a T5. But uh, it's got the same treater, uh, treater, same tweeter treatment that the AX7 has. Um, it's got, you know, the, a really good polypropylene woofer. Just an amazing speaker, but A, B, and it in the store. I wish I should could have taken some video of that, but, you know, Guitar Center's a little weird about filming in there they didn't really want for whatever reason a lot of footage being filmed in the store which i'm not criticizing i mean the guys are awesome over there but anyhow i just felt like i didn't want to put them on you know under any pressure by filming or wanting to film so having said that this speaker when i a beat it against the yamaha hs8 freaking blew it away Okay, so there's the final uh, installation. All I gotta do is plug them in. I gotta crawl down under the desk. I didn't think there was any need for you guys to see me climbing in and out of my wheelchair and my pants falling down and shirt twisting and coming off and showing you a bunch of butt crack. Cause that typically happens when a guy like me rolls around on the floor. It's a little messy, of course. Get uh, bags and boxes and all kinds of doodads everywhere. but. That's eh, an easy clean. I'll just throw all this stuff in one box and we'll be out of here. But that is the final picture, minus the trash, of the Atom T7V new studio speaker. So be sure and stop by the Atom website and uh, check them out and get some more specs and info on the tweeters and things like that. But that is my new home for our tutorials and for my mixes and new releases at least in the immediate future anyway. So yeah, hopefully you found this informative and you know, something you <clears throat> enjoy watching, excuse me. I uh, yeah, had a lot of fun putting it together for you. So unboxing the new Atom T7V speaker and studio tour with your boy DJ Vic Vapor. Thanks for tuning in as always and uh, plenty more tutorials and cool videos coming your way. So share, like, and subscribe and uh, yeah. Peace.